want everybody to feel they were heard and had um, plenty of opportunity for input, but just to recognize that we're moving to a different topic at whatever, 10, 30, or 11. And then if we're saying finance could be an hour, it should be said all plan to be done by one still. Um, and we would just know to bring up two little snacks with us uh, as to breakfast, because we do start so early in the morning. Is that something well, to try? Point, yeah, another point to consider is if we had fat and cat finance together, some of the districts, because they have obligations such as due process, mediation, that a director might have to leave. And if her finance person is here, she can at least hear us. You're saying the whole meeting, Peggy, if mm -hmm. they were both here for the whole meeting? Yeah, for the finance. For the finance part. I don't think that finance necessarily wants to hear everything that we talk about in programming, but if they were here for those uh, sort of packing facts, you both hear finance together. We wouldn't have to repeat it again in that meeting. Would it, would it make sense to maybe um, start program till a certain time and give an hour for finance and so you know say whatever time it might be say it's 10 o'clock we go over finance and then finance is basically done if they want to come for all of it they can come for all of it and then after that hour then program continues and still be out by close to one like Linda was saying you know so I would be concerned that we'd be in the middle of a conversation and to end that, it wouldn't be fair to the people engaged in that conversation to start another meeting. Do you think it would be wise to start with back and pack at the beginning? Do the finance get it done and go? Or do it at the end? I mean, if that's how we've done it before, mm -hmm. and people would leave and they wouldn't, you know, it, it ends up being longer. I don't know. Well, it may be maybe just the understanding that when finance is leaving, I think there are a, there's a big turnover of directors for PAC, the PAC end, not the PAC end. <laughs> and perhaps the new people, we kind of see a bunch of people walk out and leave in the middle of the meeting knowing, so what we're talking about is important. Maybe make sure everyone understands that we're getting these joint things together that in the past were on both agendas. And then, you know, if the PAC people have the time to want to stay for the program discussions that don't have the finance piece attached, you know, maybe just having that understanding, because I know in the years I've been here, I've never heard that explanation, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah. But you kind of feel like, oh, I guess our stuff is important. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it isn't, but, you know. But, so maybe just something as simply as explaining that and starting to <coughs> track and pack together. Because I do agree, having the same conversation twice and not hearing both opinions doesn't make a lot of sense. So if we were all together, that makes a lot more sense. And then, um, so the things we need to be together on and then. Yeah, and I don't know how much people have an opportunity to discuss things with their, pro between program and finance even before they come to the meeting. I mean, because um, you do get a bit of a preview. <laughs> and I realize sometimes, you know, that's not always possible. But, um, so. Um, well, I think I hear more people, the only people I'm hearing are saying that they would like to have um, some more time. Right. Uh, I, I have heard, um, well, I'm just thinking this maybe because I want to. I'm thinking I've heard more of the start together uh, is convenient. And then with the joint items uh, and the little, like, mostly. And I might say if you have questions, you know, kind of think about them beforehand or ask about them beforehand. And then have the, uh, when we're finished with the items that really take took joint input, then uh, finance would be done with the meeting and half would continue uh, and you know to leave a commitment. I hesitate to ask uh, the directors, program directors to stay much past about 12. I mean, if we're starting at 7.45, that's a huge chunk out of the day. So again, if we could be careful in looking at our agendas for our part of the meeting uh, of things that need discussion and don't need discussion, those kinds of things. Um, and to help each other kind of redirect ourselves in terms of if we're getting off topic, which I know in the past we could tend to get into conversations that were probably not really um, on point for our subject. So I think I'm hearing more people or I'm seeing some heads nodding that think that might be a model to try it on first to see how that works. You know, when we start yeah. together. I we're trying an overlap model in the secondary and elementary this year. might be able to do something similar, but secondary comes in first, and there's two hours of things on the agenda that are just secondary. Then elementary shows up, and there's things on the agenda that are for everybody. Then the secondary leaves, and then it's time for elementary. And it does um, limit a lot of extra 
conversation that maybe we don't need because everybody wants to get through everything. So could we do something like start with PAC, overlap with PAC, PAC goes, PAC finishes? Because I'm, I'm not sure, are there some PAC items that they may need to get back in to do without us? <laughs> but if you do have to get started and you've got to follow your agenda and you have to have a facilitate that moves things along. And I think I talked about that too, Lori, the only point I think Jean made and, and um, is, you know, what if when it's time for a fact to come in the middle, if you're hot and heavy in a discussion that you have, you need more time to continue, do you still have the same level of familiarity with it after an hour or two of looking just at finance to come back and pick up where you are. I don't we know wouldn't that. Come back. Not at that yeah. long. We wouldn't come back. It would get yeah. tabled down to the next oh. time. Yeah, the intent of that know. is there is your allotment of time. Okay. Plus, keeping in mind, there's a lot of things on PAC that I know are also on PAC. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to need the four hours that we currently right. have. No. We're going to need less time because we're only focusing on the program pieces. Mm -hmm. And then other time is going to be absorbed with the overlap stuff that's being discussed twice. So, so kind of tossing that out to people, what about like private time, I don't mean private, but um, <laughs> both, you know, job alike, overlap, job alike. Yeah. Is that a better one? And keep in mind, this we're not talking every month, right? So that would be up to I think five meetings a year, and I think program has maybe seven. Because program have <laughs> one have more. Yeah, right, because they're, they're training. So they're not really I'm training. thinking we're right. not talking about every month to have that model. So the months we don't need it, and I would trust the, the people in charge to determine that and get out a notice that this is just a PAC meeting day or this is a, a PAC PAC over, overlap day. Okay. You'll see that from your agenda. So do we, we want to try that? Sure. Nod your hands, Steve. <laughs> I will make you a thumbs up. Um, so can that, does that go as a recommendation, John? I think we need yes. to identify. I think you uh, start our first next, and when. Our next um, meeting where we have both finance and program meeting in the same month is March. Well, yes. January. September. No, I said the next one is March. March. So if I, you know, if we wanted to try that out, we could try that out in March. See how it worked. Does that come in on you that first thing in the morning? No, we start after. We start at one So my sense would be when we try it, let's keep PAC coming first, and then PAC coming next, and stay in month. Miss Martin stops <laughs> cracking her box. <laughs> <laughs> she wants it again. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hit my muffin. The needle team. You know, as I recall, the last time um, finance wasn't. They aren't morning people. <laughs> they didn't want to show up here at 7:45, um, so it might be best just to keep the program at 7:45. Um, like and I know you guys are much harder to break away from the office once you're there. I think mm -hmm. we're all hard. But. So kind of, and I don't know if we need two hours or three hours. I think as you look at agenda, let us know. Look at the agenda because uh, we did do a good job this morning, but we had a very short agenda. Uh, so we're not going to do that till March. So we'll only have one try at it then this year. Well, well we could decide maybe. at that point too what we want to move forward. Because, if there's yet another one, uh, there probably are some items that come up at the end of the year that would be good to have both groups together. And in, in March, you know, like your March, April, April and May, May, we're making decisions for the following year, so that's the time that we definitely would need to. Be together. So we all need to make sure that we have that. All done. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next point is educationally related mental health funding. Okay, um, you have the background uh, that was presented to superintendents, uh, and in that, you know, it was maybe a little bit different than the background we had for PAC and PAC because we kind of had it as uh, two separate items. But essentially, um, we're continuing to look at, um, you know, uh, how we want to go about allocating the mental health money. Uh, one of the first things is to look at taking the residential costs off the top. And, um, and in the current model that we um, came up with, uh, we have self-accounting costs based on a 
is from projected fee for service from last year. And so originally, I think last time we were talking about just eliminating the fee for service and having a lump sum budget for the um, program. But Catalina went back and reworked this so it looks a lot more like the uh, AB602 funding model that we're more familiar with. And so we thought that might help people to step through it. Um, we also, um, you know, continued with the idea of some of the monies that some of the costs we continue to pay out of the expat or regional services that truly are aligned with mental health. So um, some of these are new obligations, such as residential monitoring and visitations. Uh, others are obligations we've paid for all along, such as um, transportation and escort services to residential placements. Um, so we continued with those in here, also moving the cost for our parent training component over out of the regional services budget into the ex into mental health services uh, because those really are part, could be a part of mental health funding, and then the reallocation of cost of self staff um, that are doing mental health related duties, um, and. Um, and then we uh, are continuing to work with a uh, with our county mental health to develop an MOU. Uh, at our last meeting, they did indicate that um, they felt they needed to go back and start over on the MOU. Uh, so it looks like it'll be a while before it gets developed. And uh, they also indicated that none of it would be retroactive. So. Um, the, if we already incurred bills for services you know, at this point of the year, they weren't sure that that would be retroactive in the MOU. So um, I think we're still open to some discussions. I can, as a background, um, we just did look at um, the referrals we have for mental health services. And in 0910, from the period of July to October, we had 58 referrals. Um, there was an unusually high number of referrals in August that year, and I think that was the year we all bumped, well, the Northern Districts bumped up their calendars and started in early August. So that may have um, created an unusually high. There were 26 of the 58 referrals came in August that year, and we don't usually see that many. <coughs> in 10-11, from July to August, we had 37 referrals. And this year, between July and the end of October, we've had 73. So we doubled what we've had last year. Um, so we certainly are seeing an increase in the referrals that are coming to the SELFA since we no longer have the option of referring to Department of Legal. So Catalina, did you want to go over the funding mode? Just kind of walk us through the part that you have in the book and sure. explain that we should look pretty familiar. Okay. This is like, like uh, Joe mentioned, I'm kind of trying to make it kind of something look like our 8602 funding a little bit. So um, the top section here where it says the total allocation by district, that's the projected P2 ABA from all of the districts as of September, the latest that we have, and then that's the ratio. Um, we're getting two two pieces of money that are coming directly to the south, but the first piece is the federal piece, which is that ratio. Um, it's, which is $729,000. Then out of the state Prop 98 money, we're anticipating getting $4,884,000, which is the sum of the, of the um, column D and column E. It's the sum of those two numbers. And um, I, we've made an adjustment. Initially, the, the state is going to be, and they have actually already sent 50% uh, of the state money, and it is sitting in one of our accounts because we don't know exactly where to 